Hello and welcome to Metal Effort. My name's Nehemiah and today we are celebrating our one year anniversary of the channel starting. I figured that I'll do a collection video because that's how I kicked off the channel one year ago. I did a, a fake collection video not too long ago, which was just nonsense, music, silliness. This is gonna be a real proper collection video. So let, let's get started because we got a lot of knives to cover. We'll start with the classics the Spyderco Pair 3 and the PM2. Now, these have shown up in the vast majority of my videos as my main two size comparisons, and that will probably continue to be so. Uh, I like the contrast of color. You have the, the satin and the DLC, just so people can kind of get a feel for both. Um, I like the PM2 a lot more than the Pair 3, um, even though I do enjoy, enjoy the Pair 3 just fine. Uh, these are not my favorite knives, obviously, uh, but they're just so good because a lot of people, if they don't own one, they've at least handled one in the knife community. If you haven't, you should. Uh, just so you know kind of what all the hubbub is about, and, and it's a good kind of uh, calibration knife or a set of knives to figure out what's heavier, shorter, smaller, lighter, different shape, whatever. This is just a great springboard for that. So we'll stick these here in the corner. I'm definitely not gonna have enough room for everything, so we'll cycle stuff out uh, as we need to. We're gonna keep going with Spyderco for a little while. I've got the Spyderco Manix 2. This is the 20CV version, and man, I really was surprised by this knife. I didn't think it was going to be as good as it ended up being, and I felt compelled. It's dirty, because I use it. <laughs> uh, I wanted to compare it to the, the Shaman. So I did a comparison video between these three uh, to kind of find out which one I think is the best, and I try to do like a, a scoring system. It's not 100% non-biased, but uh, I think it's an interesting way to kind of frame it and logically try to figure out which one is, is best, you know, for a particular situation. So check that video out if you haven't. Uh, I think I'm pretty much tied on the PM2 and the, the Manix 2. Uh, if I could only have one knife, I'd actually have a hard time picking, where if you'd asked me before I got to check out the Manix, I'd be saying PM2 all the way. There are some advantages that the Manix can kind of fight back with. But overall, I think my favorite is the, the Shaman of the three. Continuing with Spyderco, we've got the Pison. Now, <clears throat> this this ended up being one of my most watched reviews. Um, it It's definitely a decisive knife. I think, you know, I did a pretty good job of pointing out the things I didn't like about it or the things that could be possible issues for people. Uh, but ultimately, I think I fell on the, the side of the fence of I like it and I want to keep it. And I think a lot of people got off of it. And I don't blame them. You know, if you're normally paying two, $300 for a knife, you know, springing up to $500 is definitely kind of a big deal. You know, it's, it, it's really got to earn its right to, to be in your collection. So there's just something about this integral, the, the blade shape, the fidget factor, the profile. Once I, I stuck this Lynch uh, clip on there. I just fell in love with the knife as a whole. So for the time being, it's staying in the collection and I'm pretty pleased with it. Next, and this is probably my overall favorite Spyderco. This is the Spyderco Spidey Chef. Oopsie. He's got camera, camera shyness. Um, this thing is just a beast. It's got the LC200N, very thin blade stock. And once I figured out that I could Spidey flick it just like normal, I really did fall in love. It had some lock stick when I did the review. I had it carbonized um, by Michael Emler, and eventually it broke in. And so the the lock stick it's it's there a little bit, but I don't know. It's it's like 90% better than it was. And otherwise, it's a perfect specimen. It's perfectly centered. Action is great. It's just been a beast for me. When I cook meals, I usually reach for this guy. All right, and then one, this is not a Spyderco knife, but it's got a Spidey hole. We'll kind of finish this section out with the Griptilian, mini Griptilian, and specifically the one with the spider hole. I really liked this knife. It's just a perfect kind of starter knife, I feel like, if you're trying to figure out if you like Benchmade or Spyderco better. This gives you kind of the best parts of both to kind of figure out what direction you want to go. 
Uh, it's very small, lightweight, EDCable. It's not like the greatest slicer ever, but it's thin enough that it can get most jobs done. And it's just a good like utility knife, kind of EDC, small little guy to just always have around. Um, the action on this one is superb. I've heard from people that it's not as good. I don't know if I just got lucky on that or if you got to break it in or tune it just right. But regardless, this sucker is good to go. So I really like this. It's my only Benchmade that I ended up keeping, uh, but it really deserves a spot in my collection. Okay, next section, we're going to start off with a Chinese brand. This is the Civivi Backlash. This is the kind of budget option of Wii's line. And this was the first one that I, I purchased. Uh, it was the smallest of all the options they had at the time. And it's still pretty, like, reasonable size. I mean, it's, it's not that much smaller than, like, a PM2. So um, they didn't have a lot of smaller options. But I really like this. It was good. The action is good, I should say. The action is solid. It, it's detent. It's tuned. It's better on the open than on the close. But still, I mean, this is like a $42 knife, guys. I mean, this thing is awesome. Uh, very thin behind the edge, very uh, aggressive, hollow grind, already starting with very thin blade stock. So I think Civivi just kind of figured it out. We want good action and we want knives that cut well. And then they're like, hey, let's dominate that budget market and fill those two needs. So this thing is awesome for that. Next Civivi knife is the Statera. And this is something, I, man, I this is kind of a conundrum for me. In some ways... This is awesome. I, I just love it. As far as action goes, this is so much better than even the Backlash. I mean, the detent is just, bam, hard. It, it's You could do pu push button, you could do light switch, and it's just amazing. I mean, it really competes with like the really high-end stuff like uh, uh, Grimsmo Norseman or um, Holt Spectre. I, I, I'm serious here. I mean, just the, the way it opens up is just perfect. And then on the clothes, it's actually really smooth as well. So this is kind of a weird knife in the sense that it's a budget option. It's, you know, a Civivi knife, but it's a little bit more premium in that kind of world. So you've got some G10 underneath, but some carbon fiber laminate kind of plastered on the top. Um, it's kind of bead blast finish, D2 steel, depending on who you ask. Some people prefer the stainless of the cheaper budget options, but D2 does cut a little bit better for a little bit longer in most cases. Uh, really easy to sharpen and put a nice mirror edge on that bad boy. Um, but just the action on this is amazing. And then last Civivi knife here is the Civivi McKenna. This thing is phenomenal. I fell in love with this knife pretty much right away. Their first really, really, really small Civivi knife and it's designed by Elijah Isham and they just hit it out of the park. It's like 1.9 ounces, front flipper, extremely good action. I mean, really, really, really good. I just lent this to Nick Shabazz and he gave it a very favorable review, uh, just like mine. Amazing little knife. It, this is just, uh, if you want something that's kind of fidgety, front flipper, unique, Still, the, the size of it is good enough to get all four fingers on there if you're medium to medium-large hands. Um, just amazing. I, I think I actively like this better than the Busker, which is like four or five times as expensive. So <laughs> that's saying something. So that's it for the Civivi line. All right, next up are the CKF knives that I've got in my collection. The Suhoi 3. This was my second ckf knife my first one was the terra um designed by snack tan and i love that knife i ended up buying two actually uh it was it's a very expensive knife you know 900 to like 1600 depending on what you know finish you get and all that stuff and i just couldn't justify that cost in my collection at the time and so I was introduced to just the quality that CKF could put out, and I saw the Suhoi, and I really liked the profile and the, the specs on the blade geometry and stuff, so I decided to give it a try. Kind of a big risk, you know, ordering something that's, you know, brand new knife, kind of unproven. Uh, you're dealing with Russia, so it's not like returns are, like, super easy. Um, but I, I kind of 
bit the bullet and took took a shot at it and uh turned it out to be an amazing knife this is i think just as good as the shirogorov hottie that i had some ways even better for like half the cost this is like 455 dollars marbled carbon fiber they they gave me the normal like twill carbon fiber as well and i could just slap those on whenever i want titanium nice machine work zirconium backspacer just a really elegant and beautiful knife really thin blade stock for such a, a a big knife this is a four inch blade but only 3.5 millimeters very thin behind the edge n390 i put a wicked edge on there and this thing is just amazing the action is superb it actually fits in your pocket really well. Excellent clip, very deep carry, very easy to get in and out. This thing is a beast. I mean, it's just so good. And then I saw that they were going to come out with a Philippe Georget collaboration. And I flipped my lid because I have secretly coveted this knife for a long time. This is the 523. He's got a 520 rumored to be coming out later this year that I am going to go crazy if I can get. This thing is even better than this. <laughs> it's another big knife, another four incher here. This is a gigantic front flipper knife. And the action on this thing is amazing. I, I think the drop shuttiness of this is beyond perfect. And it just, it whacks open. I guess the biggest downside to this knife is just how big and heavy it is. You have a zirconium bolster. Uh, as well as a big old fat zirconium backspacer, which just weighs the knife down. It it, it feels like like a, a fancy Cadillac back when Cadillac was like the pinnacle of luxury. I mean, it's, this thing is just a beast. Now, you can see the zirconium kind of marks up really easy, but when you clean it off, you know, get it ready for the the runway, it just, it glistens, it, it sheens. It does, it is a very beautiful knife gigantic tall grind this is starting at 3.5 millimeter just like that one but it's even taller blade even thinner behind the edge amazing sharpening choil amazing action very ergonomically comfortable man this if i can only have one knife it's probably the fifth 23 it's really good i'd be taking a hit you know as far as like portability and size in the pocket and all that but everything else it just it's it's part of the reason why i'm in the knife hobby i guess it's more than just a, a tool it kind of transcends tool toolmanship uh and i'm really glad i was able to get one so that's it for ckf let's uh let's move on now for the folders i've got kind of four knives that are just their own category here i've reviewed a lot of mass drop knives I think the only one that I have right now that I've actually kept is the Keen. So I think that says something. It's just a really solid design. It's very simplistic, but just executed very well. It's a good size, 3.3 inch ish, somewhere in there. I love the kind of spear point shape of it. Action is awesome and just a really clean design. Uh, very good to, to fidget with. I love that knife. Another another one that kind of might surprise you is uh, this is the malware. This is a collaboration with Best Deck. This thing is definitely unique. It's got a very aggressive profile for sure. Uh, but I just I loved how well this knife is put together. It's perfectly centered. Action is incredible. It has the two really good ways to open the knife. It looks like it would be the most uncomfortable thing. But it actually has the the kind of grooves in the right spot. And it's surprisingly comfortable. And it just it's kind of my exacto knife uh, knife in my collection where if I really need to get in somewhere that most knives can't really get to, uh, I'll reach for this one. And it, it's just got that like weird gentleman's James Bond vibe to it. I, I know some people think it's like butt ugly, but it just, it speaks to me. I really like it. This is, this was given to me by Indiana Knives. This is the Real Steel Metamorph. I think G5 Metamorph. Yeah, G5. This is the greatly improved, in my opinion, uh, G10 version. Uh, the aluminum ones were just super slippery, but this is like a $60 knife and it's just really good. It's a front flipper, 
that you really have to get used to <laughs> the placement. It's really hard. It's such a long knife and there's not a lot to grab onto. It took me a long time before I could finally figure out how to comfortably open the knife reliably every single time. But it's got some really interesting innovations. Inside, there's some needle bearings. So it's like a cross between bearings and a washer, like little little discs, you know, almost like you cut cut a pizza, you know, and then you just took out every other slice and that was your metal washer. That's kind of what it looks like on the inside, but it's actually got really good action. So it's like, I don't know, the best of both, I guess, as far as like washer simplicity, but a little bit smoother than just a straight washer. And I saved probably the my, my new favorite. I, I would take the, the 523 only because of value, but if I could never sell a knife, I think I would probably keep this one. This is the Three Rivers Manufacturing Atom. I just put this review up recently, and I would say it really competes very well against the Spidey Chef. This is 20 CV, which is excellent. Uh, this is a little bit more idiot-proof as far as rust, but still, I mean, 20 CV is no slouch on the, the rust resistance. So uh, the Atom is even thinner than the Spidey Chef. Uh, very, very, very good cutter. Tall grind, um, really good action, comfortable micarta, excellent clip out of the box. Um, they're both deep carry. These are just, if you're looking for an EDC knife and you can find either one of these, I, I, I don't think there are two better knives that I can possibly recommend uh, between these two. Um, they are not exactly the same. I think I prefer the, the opening aperture of the Spidey Chef. The thumb stubs work perfectly fine. I can even Spidey flick the thumb stud, but it does hurt a little bit. Everything else about the knife, I think, is better on this one. Uh, with the steel, though, I'm a little 50-50 on like which one I like more. I, 20 CV is amazing. But these two, and then for like fun reasons, <laughs> these are my three favorites. Right here, uh, you have just amazing kind of blend of, of things to appreciate about these knives. And so that's it for the folders. I do have a, a fixed blade section here coming up, so stay tuned for that. Okay, so for the fixed blades, we're going to start with where I, the one I've had the entire time. This is the Bark River Crewware LT, which is thinner blade stock, Aurora. Uh, this is a fantastic knife. This is the the biggest of my good fixed blades, I should say. Uh, this thing is awesome. Uh, as you can see, I, I've put a lot of work into this thing. Uh, I've made a baton with it. So I carved this bad boy. Uh, this is, I think, oak. It's like just a giant piece of wood. And everything I, I did to make that thing was done with this knife, which is awesome. But I didn't stop there. I got another Bark River knife, and you may have seen this on my Instagram. This is the Hunter Classic Drop Point, or Drop Point Hunter Classic, something like that. Uh, this is an excellent knife. This is an LMAX. I wanted a fixed blade that was stainless, and this kind of fit the bill. A little bit smaller, a little bit thinner blade stock. Uh, just in case I want to do some, you know, meal prep or something, fixed bladey, kind of out out in the field if I if I go outside, uh, that's what I would grab. And then, I, the next knife, I'll tell you a funny story. So, I really like the uh, Dutch Bushcraft knives channel. Those guys are just goofballs, and I started watching them over a year ago. And uh, Mickey, he loves his Gunny Scandy. Bark River Gunny Scandy, but they stopped selling it. But I thought, you know, these guys, this channel is such a popular channel, and he raves so much about that knife. They have to bring that knife back and do another run. So I sent an email and said to, I, I think it was Knife Ship Pre, who are one of the two vendors, main vendors with Bark River, and I said, I'm pre ordering the, <laughs> the Gunny Scandy. I know you don't make it, but I think you're going to, and I want to place an order right now. And they're like, okay, you're on this list that nobody else is on. And then I, I was right. Almost a year later, they bring the knife uh, back, and they sent me an email, and I, I was able to purchase this bad boy. So, Gunny Scandy in 3V, uh, 
amazing knife, very comfortable. It's going to be great for bushcraft. I'm about to go camping with some friends, and uh, we're going to have some fun kind of testing all these for uh, bushcraft and feather sticking and just kind of, you know, hanging out with fixed blades. But, but, there's one more knife. I saved the, the very best for the very last. One of the knives that the Dutch bushcraft knives guys really like as well is the the Malanika Puko. And it's so popular that he's got like a one-year waiting list. But I got on the list and I just got this in. This is amazing. So Malanika, I think it means like precious in some language. I, I don't know which, but this thing is amazing. This is 4V steel. Um, amazing, amazing craftsmanship. I mean, so you have a horizontal hand rub satin finish this way, and then a vertical on this edge bevel. And notice it comes to a point. There is no like V grind secondary bevel or anything like that. It's just one giant into a point, which is amazing. This thing bites so well into anything you're trying to cut. But even better than that, I'm going to show you this, the sheath. The sheath is incredible. Just leather, crazy stitch work. Uh, there's a little wood kind of cage right here. So when you stick the knife in, it slides in and then has a really satisfactory clip to it. And then a nice little dangler and you're, you're off to the races. This thing is just beautiful. Goes right in there. Uh, long time wait for this thing, uh, but well worth it. Uh, so there's my fixed blade collection. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know sometimes it's kind of boring to just go through what other people have. Uh, but, you know, I people ask me what I have and what I don't have all the time. Maybe this will give you a good uh, jumping off point of if you didn't see a knife in the video, I probably sold it. So, or traded it. Okay, that's it. That's all I have for you. Bye! Bye!